Hello everyone, welcome to my All The Mods 8 transportation guide. So in this video I'm going to try and go over everything that you could use for transportation during your All The Mods 8 journey. So the first one we're going to go over is the Waystones mod. So we've got a Waystone right here that I have named Home. And we've got another one over here, Mad Me Mirror. That was the name that it was given by the game itself. Waystones are found in villages. So if you don't have the resources to create them because the recipe is kind of expensive, you need some amethyst, you need some ender pearls, and you need some emeralds to make these warp stones. And then you need some obsidian as well. So they're kind of expensive, but you can find them around the world, mainly in villages. So. If we pop over to this village over here, this is the kind of structure you're going to see when you, uh, when you spawn in and you go to a village. And as you can see, you can move between your waystones. So if I pop over here, yeah, we move backwards and forwards. The reason we can do that without it costing levels is because we are quite close. We're within a certain amount of chunks. If I were to fly over in this direction, for example, like this in your save you're going to be able to see that it's going to cost you a couple of levels so you need a few levels just to uh, travel further distances the next one we're going to go over is warp plates which is from the same mod as this the waystones mod warp plates are basically cheaper versions of the waystone except they can't go to multiple places waystones there we go warp plates right here they cost some of this warp dust, which is just one ender pearl and an amethyst. And you get this warp dust and relatively simple to make right there. And what that does is it creates, I'll tell you what, we'll put another one down. Let's put one right here and we'll put one right here. When you open it up for the first time, it will infuse the flint with some of the warp powder or warp dust. And then if you click on another one, and you take that one out and you put the other one back in. This is actually locked to this position right here. So we could move this warp stone if we wanted. Uh, we could put it, I don't know, over here somewhere. But you will always come back to this position right here. Uh, so if I stick that one in there and I stand on this, we go to the other warp plate. Where am I? Over there. And if we come back off, go back on, we'll land again on this warp plate. So really useful and you can do it over vast distances again, just like the waystones, but very, very handy, especially if you've managed to find some uh, amethyst and you've killed a couple of endermen. Really good if you want to get to, for example, your mine and you can't be asked to go up and down on your like uh, stair system or something like that. You just stick one at the bottom, stick one at the top and you can suddenly just warp down to your mine easy enough and start mining. And then when you're done, you can come back, stand on this one, and you walk back up to your base. Really nifty. Now, this next one I'm gonna go over is actually from the mod Hexerai. So Hexerai adds this broom, which allows you to have creative flight, technically. It's like a boat that is like flying. So if we stick one down, I'm going to take that off my hotbar for now. And we right click on this. We can press space. I've actually already got one up here. And press space like this. And then if you want to get off of it, you hit shift. And if we can jump off like that. And you'll see this one is floating down to the floor. You want to be careful with these brooms if you are using them. So we can use them to, you know, fly about creative mode, as it were. Uh, you can't actually look like I can't look left right now and I can't look right like this because if we look we're actually sat on the broom like that but if you uh, if you enable this thing down here which is float mode on like I have for the one up there it will stay where it is if you accidentally fall off your broom for some reason like uh, really high up and uh, you fall off your broom Unless you've got another way of getting up to your broom, yeah, it's going to be really difficult to get on your broom again. So just be careful about that. Now, I'm not going to go over how to make the broom because there is plenty of tutorials out there on Hexray as it is right now. 
So go check those out. Now, the next thing on my list is the jetpack. The jetpack is super useful. You can put it in your curio slot, which I don't actually have whilst I'm in creative mode, but I can click like this. Uh, right now, I've got one of these uh, angel rings. Let's take that out. But we can put this either in the curio slot on our back, like that. No, not back, it's body, my bad. And uh, once you turn on the jetpack, you will fly around like this. I will say you still take four damage. So if you go really, really high up and you're higher up than that, I might not take any full damage because I've got a load of stuff on me, but yeah, I'm not going to take any full damage. I've got loads of different bits on me right now to stop full damage. But yeah, the wooden jetpack is super, super easy to make. I've got one right here. We got some of these basic coils and I think it's 44 iron is needed for the wooden jetpack, which is just the basic jetpack. Uh, you want to make... 11 of the coils that's the ratios you want to go for and then once you've got 11 coils you make five of them into the wooden energy cells and then you need to make three of three of those uh, energy cells into a wooden capacitor and then yeah you need to make two of these wooden thrusters you can upgrade this to uh, stone or copper and you can upgrade that to iron bronze or silver right here each of these has like a different amount of uh, like charge they can take. So this one, a hundred, no, wait, one million two hundred thousand FE can be stored in this silver jetpack, whereas it's only eight hundred thousand in the iron jetpack and the bronze jetpack. But each of these can be upgraded to either the electrum and and so on and so on. And then the final one is the emerald jetpack. Now you can use the emerald jetpack later on to make the creative jetpack, but. Uh, this is sort of just going through all of the different ones that you can do. Now, you might have noticed that even though I'm in creative, I, I shouldn't have unlimited power on me, but I do. And that is because I set up flux networks. So if you get some sort, I'm using a creative energy cube right here, but if you get some sort of energy going into a flux plug, I'll go over a really decent way of getting energy in another video. but. Yeah, if you get a load of energy, put it in a flux plug on one of your own networks. So I set up the Pilpo's network and I put it on my Pilpo Blue. And then you make yourself a flux controller. You can set, once you've put it on your own network again, you can set wireless charging and you can set it to wirelessly charge your armor, curios, hotbar, offhand and main hand. Now, what that does is because this is in my curio slot, it's forever being uh, charged up. So I can do this. And then if we have a look, you can see it's going down and then it goes all the way back up again. That's because it's pulling power from the flux plug here. We could be in a different dimension. We could be wherever. As long as this is loaded, we are going to be getting power to our curio slot. Very useful. That brings us on to... One that's a little bit more advanced because it requires some nether stars and it also requires some unobtainium and an elytra and so on and so on. But it's worth mentioning and that is the angel ring. Now the issue with the angel ring I found at least is uh, if I put it in my angel ring slot right there and we uh, we take off our jetpack because we don't need that right now. Oh, I did just want to show you if you make a creative energy cube or Sorry, if you make any energy cube, like the basic tier one, and put some power in it, you can just charge up your jetpack and then hop off and, and go fly about with it. And then when it runs out, you can always come back, fill it up, fly about a bit more, so on and so on. Uh, but the angel ring that we were just talking about, if I'm flying right now, look at my experience bar. So it's slowly reducing. That's because the angel ring itself, there you go, needs XP. There is an upgrade to it though, which is uh, this energetic angel ring, which uh, just requires power. So as you can see right here, oh, we can pop it in 
the creative energy cube to charge it up. And it contains 300,000, wait, eh, comma there, 3 million FE per tick. Not per tick, FE. And you can replace that right there. And you can fly. I'm not in creative right now, I don't believe. But you can fly and that's being charged up again thanks to Flux Networks. So those are really, really useful. Uh, end game, I'd say. I'd say they're, they're pretty, pretty decent end game. End game, you might have a lot of experience. So it might be okay to just use a normal angel ring. But I would highly recommend setting up this Flux Network stuff to get the energetic one going. And it gives you basic flight. The next one I'm going to cover is actually called the Flugel Tiara, which is a curio slot which goes in the head item like that. There we go, inner arts. So what this does is, I don't know if you can see it, if I do this, see I've got a wing. Well, we are now flying and you can see right here, these little things right here are slowly decaying and we can basically stay up in the air until they run out. So I'm gonna wait for this to run all the way down to nothing and then uh, you'll see what happens when uh, when you run out of flight time. Here we go, the last one is just fading out and you drop. And then whilst you're on the floor, it slowly recharges. What I will say though, is uh, you need some mana. So you see the blue bar that is like taking over my experience bar right there, down at the bottom of my screen. The blue bar is there right now because I'm using a mana mirror. So this thing is really, really useful. You need some Terra Steel for it and you need to get quite far through Britannia for it. But you can link, all you have to do is shift, right click on a mana pool. I'm using one of the creative versions of a mana pool, which is infinite mana. And uh, if you keep that in your inventory, you will have unlimited mana. If I grab this and lob it out, even though I've got the Flugor Tiara on and you can see the uh, the little wing I've got back there, I can still fly, but that's purely because I've got other things that are making me fly, like the angel ring is in my uh, inventory. But it is decreasing. Normally, you would not be able to fly. Next up on the list, we've got Ars Nouveau. So a really, really simple spell that you can set up right at the beginning is Bounce, which is just making some of this uh, essence right here. Not too difficult to make once you've got a little bit of Ars Nouveau set up. Get some slime balls, chuck them all together on this scribes table. What you have to do to do that is if you have your book, I'm using the creative one for now, you just right click on it, you can search, bounce, double click or click the select button. And I don't have enough <laughs> XP to do this, but if you had XP, all you need to do then is lob all of those items onto the table, as in press the Q button on them and it will throw them out. You get these glyphs right here. Uh, the other one is the leap spell. And uh, you'll need to kill some of the uh, annoying little vampire bat looking things that fly about and get some air essence. But once you've got those, you can right click both of them. That will add it to your book. And then if you note your button for opening, I've got the creative version, so we've already got everything unlocked pretty much. Grab a bounce effect. Actually, you're going to need to do a self. Self first. Not bounce. You want to do leap first. Leap. And then you also want bounce like that. So this is a really, really simple spell. And what it does is it lets you jump in the air. And because of the bounce part, I don't have enough mana to do this right now because I haven't got any mana on me, but if we were to go quite far, I've got loads of different items on me stopping me from bouncing, but you do do a little bit of a boing, boing, boing. So you can get quite far just using this. The more you use Ars Nouveau, the more mana you'll get and the more times you can, you can cast. So you could, in fact, fire it up in the air a couple of times if you've got enough mana. And you can go absolutely flying. It's what I used in my survival multiplayer uh, for the first little bit to get around. Next up, I've got a really nice 
little thing, which is actually from the old Ender IO mod, and it's become its own mod since then. Super simple, you just make a travel anchor. You need a couple of ender pearls for this, but I am standing on this one over here, and there is another one over there. Unfortunately, it's out of range, but what we can do is if we get a travel staff, like that, if we run a little bit closer, it highlights it and it says over there. So we're gonna go over there and it teleports you right there. I've been using a lot of these in all my series recently. And we can get back here just like that. Now you can name these whatever you fancy. So this one is currently locked. So let's put a new one down and put one right here. Ah, there we go and lock it. And if they were close enough like this, you can just stand on one and right click and it will take you there. Now, another neat little thing you can do with travel anchors is you can set them up a little bit like elevators. So I stuck one right above it. And if you just press the space button, you jump up to the one above it. Unfortunately, in all the mods eight recently, when I first started playing all the mods eight, this wasn't the case, but you could press shift and it would take you down, but for some reason it doesn't seem to do it anymore. There is another button you can press. In fact, I'm gonna go look that up. Okay, it's not in the keybinds, but I believe that the the shift shift right here is uh, is not working for some reason, and it hasn't been for many, many versions of all the mods eight, unfortunately, but it's still good for getting up to places. Now, speaking of elevators, We've got a white elevator right here, which are really cool because you can paint them. So I think it's, yeah, you just right click them with an object. You can, can't even see it. Looks really nice. You can right click it again to remove the camouflage. So this is just a white elevator. And above, I've got another one. Stand on it. And you press shift to go back down. Really nice for compact bases if you don't want to set up like loads of stairs or anything like that. Really, really useful. The last one I want to mention is the mech suit. So the mech suit, which uh, you need a modification station to add this module, has the gravitational modulation unit. You need this for a component of the All the Mod Star, uh, and it does take quite a lot of stuff, especially the antimatter, which is a right pain in the bum to get because you need to set up an SPS, chuck loads of power at it. But once you've got one, I believe it goes in your body armor. So you can put your body right here in the modification station. This needs power. In fact, I'll show you where the power goes in. It goes in right at the back there. And if we stick that one on like that, and then we put this on our body like that, we are currently wearing a mech suit. We can fly, even though oh, I'm in creative mode, wait. There we go, we can fly. Now, usually you would hear the sound like a little because you're flying, but another thing you can do is the muffler. If we do muffled, I think I've turned that one off. It's called mech something. I've got so many things turned off. But yeah, that's one of the things that you can turn off. Now, you might notice you are now flying around like this and you stop but you don't, you sort of skate a little bit forwards. So you're building something and you're like, I'm placing an, a block right here, right here, right here. And then you just like skid over to the side. Gets kind of annoying. There is an upgrade for that. That is the gravitational modulation or modulating additional unit. So this is an add-on where you stick that also in your, your mech suit. Take that back out. So we've got our mech suit on right now. And if we were to fly forwards, you stop instantly. So we're here, we're, we're trying to like place items and it's so much more like simple, easy to control as well. So before I go, the last thing I wanted to mention is the travel staff. We grab a travel staff right here run over there we've got an over there we want to get inside this building right here and i know you can get in through the top 
right? But you can also shift, right click, okay? And it sends you a little bit forwards, not, I meant to actually get inside, so shift, right click. Poop, it took me the other side. Okay, let's try that one more time. Eh, there you are, we're inside. So the travel staff, if you shift and then right click, will take you a little bit further forwards. It's really useful for getting out of like awkward situations. Another thing is, there is an enchant. So you know that you can uh, travel staff to any of these uh, travel anchors like this. And then if we we're a bit closer, we could go to back here, just like that. Well, you can also do that with a pickaxe if it's got the teleportation enchant on it. So we can TP up there. We can fly over here, TP over there. Very useful because, again, you can shift, click, and it does the little teleport thingy again. Very, very useful. Right, I think that concludes today's video. So. If you have any other transportation methods that you've been using that I did not cover, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm always after people giving me more advice because, you know, that's how everyone learns. And I love to learn about this game. So please, uh, please chuck them in the comments. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks for joining. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.